Ashley Marcial decided to climb a bus shelter with about a dozen other people. I could see all the way down there, all down there, people on poles. She remembers most of Sunday night. Oh my God! Just not the moments after the roof of the shelter collapsed. They said it was a pile of bodies and they just drugged me out. This is video she took just seconds before it happened. You can see all the people sitting on the roof of the bus shelter on Broad Street near City Hall. I'm not blaming SEPTA for their bus stops not being able to hold people because they're not supposed to hold people. Like I know that 100% throughout this whole story that I'm telling, all of this was a personal choice. It was my choice to get up there. It was my choice to stay up there. It was my choice to dance up there, etc. I'm not blaming anybody but myself. Like this was a personal choice and I'm just a Philly fan. And if you're not from Philly, then you won't get it, period. Hey, what's up you guys? Um, today I'm going to be doing a drive with me for this story time only because I have planned to do this video with natural lighting. I'm basically just going to be doing a full story time on what happened with this. Please excuse the shakiness of the camera because it's on the windshield. I can really prevent that. Please do not mind the um, line on my damn head because I had my headband on, so that's why there's a line. And then my lashes, I'm getting them done tomorrow. So they were actually Eagles lashes. If you guys don't follow me on Instagram, um, I had like green and white for the Super Bowl. Basically, I'm just gonna tell you guys the story start from finish, like literally when I went out to when I got out of the hospital. Even after that, like that was just a crazy time. Like I still think about this daily. Like I literally had PTSD from this. Um, y'all give us a second hey, to you say happy fucking birthday to <laughs> Nizzy. Like that's literally my fucking best friend, y'all. Like we go way back, like, way, way, the way fuck back. back. So. First, I'm gonna start off with the story time before I get to the Q&A questions. Plus, I also feel like I need to give the full story because in my news interviews and my article interviews, my blog interviews, newspaper, etc., all those interviews were very much hashed down. So they cut out a lot of part and they didn't really tell my story. So basically what happened was me and Zay went downtown to meet his friend. Zay got off of work and got home like after it started, I believe, or right when it started. So by the time that we went downtown to all of the bars and stuff, like it will already be packed. Like people were already there pre-gaming, et cetera. So we just met up with his friend at this bar on Chester Street called The Wicked Wolf. It was actually lit in there, but it was really hot. It wasn't that bad because it was only a $20 cover charge, but the only thing about it was that we got in there literally at the end of third quarter. Like we were waiting probably for like a full quarter because once they reached capacity, they stopped letting people in and then they will only let people in when people exited. We won and everyone started flooding out of the bar because the bar was basically two, three blocks away from Broad Street. So it was just like, everybody was literally gonna go straight to Broad Street. Like that was everyone's initial plan, straight to Broad Street. So I literally left the bar. There's no cars coming down Chestnut Street. So I already knew everybody was on fucking Broad Street. And it's best that we were downtown because that's where everybody was at City Hall. So left the bar, walked up Chestnut Street and the whole Broad Street was literally flooded. They had greased the poles, you guys already know, and they had the metal gates on the sidewalk so nobody would be on the sidewalks besides the officers and stuff like that. It was kind of hard for us to maneuver through the crowd only because like everybody was packed and then people were coming in our direction. We're going towards Broad Street and they're going down Chestnut Street and they're just like rushing and pushing everyone. So that's when it got crazy and I just wanted to find somewhere else to stay at. So we started to go up towards City Hall. Zay was like, yeah, I think we should go towards City Hall. That's when all the action is. And I'm like, okay, bet. Cause in crowds and shit, I will take you the fuck there, okay? I can't, Kitty, Kitty, really dude? These Philly cats are ghetto. So basically where we got, where the bus stop was, that area was kind of, like clear like in the street i don't know why so we were standing in the middle of the street so in the middle of the street is like 
I guess sidewalk, I don't know what you would call it, but like the middle platform of the street that divides the two sides of the street. I was standing up there and I saw everybody just like cheering on the bus stop. And I'm just like, wow, that looks fun. Unfortunately, yes, I was like, wow, that looks fun. And yes, I'm gonna be 100% honest with my story. I'm not lying about anything. So I forgot to mention that I only had one drink because we literally got in there basically at fourth quarter so it's just like why am i about to get a drink that you know what i'm saying so i really didn't drink the one drink wasn't gonna do anything to me i had like a shirley temple or something like that like one drink don't do nothing to you of course i wouldn't have went up there if i was drunk so i'm like yeah it looks fun because i love to do daredevil stuff i love to take risks and i just love to have fun i love to live in a moment because that's the type of person I am. You only live once, and that was my motto. When the Eagles won the Super Bowl for the first time, I really wasn't able to do as much as I did this year because I was younger. We walk over there, and I'm trying to climb up there, and then I'm just like, can somebody help me up? And they were like, yeah, but, so Zay mentioned that they were telling me that I needed to sit on the metal part, but it kind of flew over my head, like in that moment, like I just wanted to be up there and wanted to cheer on the Eagles because it was so many people up there. That just like really flew over my head. So I guess you could say that that was my fault that I didn't really listen to that. So I go up there, they help me up there. And when I'm up there, it's not that many people up there. It was probably about like, what, 10 people up there because from the video that you guys saw of the first time that it happened, the first time it happened was on the one side. It wasn't on the side that I was on. So that happened before I even went over there, got up there, etc. It was probably like 10 people up there. Everybody else on that bus stop was sitting down. I literally was probably only up there for like, what, 10 minutes, if even. I'm just up there. When me and Zay first get up there, um, we take pictures and then he gets down because he just had a weird gut feeling. I wish he would have told me that because I would have got my ass down, but it's cool. He was just letting me live my life and have fun, you know, cheering on the Eagles. He doesn't like to ruin my fun. So I respect him a lot for that. So when it was about to fall, um, I kind of knew that it was about to fall, but it happened so fast to where I couldn't really act on it. Um, so I was the one up there cheering. Everybody else was sitting down cool. There was this guy to my right and he was trying to get up here. And I'm like, I'm looking at him. I'm like, what the fuck? Like he's struggling. But as that guy is like trying to climb up here, the two guys that I'm holding on in front of me, cause I'm standing, like I said, I was the only one standing up and I was using a mess support while I stood up because the bus stop shelter, I guess was curved. It wasn't street flat platform two guys were just talking and one of them was just like yeah i feel like this joint about to pop like i feel this joint sinking in and i'm just like oh what so right when literally right when they said that i look at the dude to my right and he gets up he is on top like he's able to climb up that all happened so fast the dude said it i looked at him he's up here then boom everything fell everything fell and it knocked the wind out of me and i feel like my injuries weren't as bad as other people's i heard that a couple people had spine injuries which fucking sucks um i saw this one guy that was up there with me he had his head gushing blood so i think he cracked his skull open it was just so crazy i really am blessed that i didn't get super hurt and i think i really just fell on top of the people that were sitting down the plastic pot we fall i fall straight and then i fell on other people but i actually hit my back and my head on the bus stop bench i was knocked out for like a couple minutes they saw it all happen and he said that when it fell he just like dragged me out of the pile of bodies when i woke up i really didn't have no vision i don't even know if my eyes were open but i could not see anything i think my eyes were closed but i didn't even remember how anything happened like i just literally remember hearing it pop and then i woke up to hear all these people at first before i heard everybody all i really heard was my hearing trying to come back like my eyes were black so like i said i don't know if my eyes were closed or open and my hearing was just like fading in you know like how music fades out my hearing was literally fading in and i just hear it ringing i'm just like laying there i hear all these voices around me i hear all these people and i'm just like yo 
what is going on i was able to open my eyes because i kind of just like enforced myself to try to be better because everybody is literally just like asking me all these questions that's why i don't know if my eyes were open because everybody was just like oh um what's your name do you know where you are do you know what year it is like they said that it was so many people and doctors etc with proof that was trying to help me i had anxiety and panic attack so once i was able to open my eyes because i started hearing everybody speaking i opened my eyes and i'm just like i'm fine i know where i am i know my name like i was having a whole full out panic attack and I just got straight up and I'm just like, I'm fine, I'm fine, I'm fine. Like, get yeah, everybody get the fuck out of my feet, basically. Which is not how I intended it, but like with anxiety, yes. It was just a lot. I was able to get up, but I wasn't doing too well because I just hit my head and I just woke up from being knocked out. Okay, so we're in my room right now. And that is because my camera died while I was in the car, unfortunately. So I left off at the part where I had got up and basically was trying to get everybody out of my face because I'm just like, let me dip out. Like feeling okay, you know that lightheaded feeling like when you stand up and your head like either like just woken up feeling yeah so we started walking and zay had asked somebody else who fell if they were walking to the paramedics which was literally like a block away or like around the corner on the other side of city hall at this point i know that i'm not just okay because as i'm walking i'm starting to like lose my breath like i'm walking with my mouth open it's harder for me to walk and zay is holding me up as we're walking and i'm basically about to pass out again like and i'm just walking like this so as soon as we get over there they basically rush me to the ground and by that i mean they wanted me to take off my jacket lay on my jacket as a head support and make sure that my head and my back is okay because i had a possible neck injury falling on my head and hitting my back it was possible that i could have fucked up my spine that i could be paralyzed so i was laid out like that for like an hour the guy with the bleeding head, they took him first, but because it was so many people out on Broad Street, it was like really hard for the paramedic to get to me. The guy from another truck, I think he might have stayed back from when the guy's paramedic came, the one with the bloody head, or I, don't, I really don't know where he came from, but he was a paramedic and I had a bike cop helping me the whole time. And that's who you guys see in the iconic picture of me smiling. The story behind that picture was that I was literally just waiting there too long. I kept yelling at the police cop, but like, not really yelling at her i just kept telling them that i don't want nobody taking pictures of me i don't want anybody recording me posting me up because if i end up on like no gun zone or like philly school paw if like me laid out on the ground and my mom sees it like she's gonna have a heart attack so i just wanted to really prevent all of that and you know just wanted to make sure i'm okay or like at least call my mom from the hospital i just did not want her to see that and not know where i was because she assumed that I'm just going out to watch the NFC championship game. That's it. I asked Zay not too long before my paramedics came to take a picture of me and I think his name was Dave. I think it was Ari, but me and Ari and Dave all take a picture because I just said that I wanted to remember the people that helped me because it was so many people helping me, but those were the only two people that were only to stay and make sure I was okay until my paramedics came. And like I said, I was there for an hour, so they were just holding my head. I was just like, yeah, Zay, can you take a picture so I can remember these people who helped me and i decided to upload it after i found out i was okay the ambulance came put me on a board and shit and put me on a gurney um this is my first time in the ambulance that's why i recorded because i'm just like yo what the fuck i never imagined that i would be in a neck brace in an ambulance i never thought i would be in a neck brace period because i never even broke any of my bones so i have never had like crutches any of the sorts the ambulance was quiet literally we rushed to the hospital and i was put in the emergency trauma unit and like i said this is my first for almost everything it was the first time i was in an emergency trauma unit this was the first time i had fucking 20 doctors doing 20 different things on me like this is crazy and this just shows me how they handle things when serious things happen like when people get shot or whatever you might think it is so that was something that also opened up my eyes yeah it was just crazy they had to cut me out of my clothes bruh they literally had to cut me out of my damn hoodie. Like, you see that, y'all? And everybody was commenting on my hoodie, too. They literally had to cut me out of everything that was from my head to my waist. 
and it sucked. I'm just upset about that still, but you know, it's whatever. They brought me in, cut me out my clothes, check in pulse, check in everything ultrasound etc i'm not pregnant but like checking all of that they did my quick x-rays and then i had to go do cat scans so crazy just to have no injuries and concussions god is amazing i was only in the hospital for about like three hours so i got there around like eight and i was discharged at 11 ish um, afterwards I called my mom once I was on my way home and I'm just like mom I was in the hospital I'm okay I fell off a bus stop blah 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 I really feel like after that everything changed once I posted up the TikToks and the pictures the next day because that was just really crazy <laughs> I had to laugh about it. I had to just hide the trauma just the experience of everything because I could only laugh at it I'm okay right so it's okay to laugh at it but when i looked at the pictures and stuff after that it was just like funny to me but i still couldn't get over the fact of like what the fuck happened so that was basically what happened and then after i uploaded it and stuff like that i had got my first interview with fox 29 it was so crazy they basically reached out to me from fox 29 i had nbc 10 reach out to me but they didn't go forward with my interview i don't know why and then i had an interview with six action news and then it kind of went up from there i had one with the philadelphia inquirer it was just so crazy i had so many things happen to me um and i'm just very blessed i had an interview with la times i had an interview with lfg sports i was posted on complex bleacher report some people said they saw me on espn i was just posted everywhere the only thing that i did not get was a response from the eagles which is crazy and yeah that's really what happened that was the full story i feel like i gave you guys a full detailed story of what happened because everything was just so crazy and now i'm going to answer everyone's questions because i had put something on my story for people to ask me questions if they had any with this situation so i'm about to get one with the question i have a good amount so somebody said what was your drink of choice before you got on top of the platform i think he gave me a shirley temple with like vodka or like tequila i would hope it's not vodka but i don't know what they make shirley temples with because i usually just get like a virgin shirley temple and then i get a drink on the side somebody said when will you return to finish the job when the eagles doing a damn thing again next fucking season period because i told y'all even though we lost for the super bowl if we would have won i would have been making my reappearance i said this did you twerk up there on the bus stop no i didn't twerk i was shaking that shit period literally love how you turned it into a positive experience thank you so much because you know that was scary and people probably like these dumb philly fans but you don't really get it if you're not from here have you seen more sales with your brand since then honestly yes when i went viral on twitter I had a few people order actual merch from my brand. Not this merch, but actual merch like shirts that I had on my page still. So I'm very blessed. When I put out the shirts and stuff, people were buying it. So yeah, I think I'm going to keep that design up. So if you guys are interested in getting this shirt or getting the shirt with just my picture on it or hoodie or sweatshirt, Head over to YoungStCustoms.com. They are still available. How long will you be selling the viral pick t-shirts? Oh, period. Like I just said, answer the whole question already. I'm keeping it up there. Um, if I take it down, then I take it down. But I want to keep it up there. You want to go to the Patriots versus Eagles game this upcoming season. I don't know if you're asking me to go. But if you're asking me to go, I'm going to politely decline. But if you're asking me if I actually just want to go to that, hell yeah. I feel like a Patriots-Eagles game would be a good join. Did you make any good friends the night of the conference championship win? Actually, I did. And I forgot to give a special shout out. I don't know what his name is. But there was a guy that was up there with me who had fell um he seeked medical attention but he was literally fine but his friend was also there too and he stayed there almost the whole time and if he couldn't stay there because they were telling people to leave like get away from me because i told him to like tell people to get the fuck away from me 
um, he came back and he even found me on Instagram and I just was able to give him a proper thank you but thank you again for you know making sure I was okay making sure I got medical attention just being real because you know they really don't care about that stuff would you do it again fuck no because it was very much God by my side that I did not get hurt so if I were to do it again it's very much possibility that I could get hurt but this was just God. What has the response from the public taught you to not feed into that social media shit? Because I really see it now when people are like bullying, like celebrities and all of that. Just people being just negative on social media. And I never really had to experience that until this situation. And I was just like, yeah, no. Except for certain things. Certain things I had to point out. Like somebody was saying I wasn't black. People were saying like, oh, if this was a black person, da 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 da. And I'm just like, what the hell? Everybody was just like, what the hell? My mom black as hell. And then people were saying I was doing this shit for clout. Bitch, who knew this was gonna happen? Nobody. Nobody knew. The hell? How do you view being in the public eye? It was actually fun. I had people noticing me when I went back to work. Everybody at my job knew who I was because they know who I am so it was just funny like it was kind of cool people knowing me but it just got annoying when people kept like just saying a joke like making more jokes like I'm just like I'm tired of this but yeah it was pretty cool I don't think people really noticed me because after that happened I didn't have the same style hair I had this hair um what was your family's reaction they just found out through social media I went viral on Facebook too so I went viral on Instagram Twitter and Facebook and TikTok so they saw me on Facebook and on the news and shit like that and they just like sent me the pictures like oh my gosh I saw you in the news or, oh my gosh I saw you on Facebook or just send me the pictures itself and was like oh my gosh are you okay and I'm just like I'm fine guys like I'm, I'm fine and that was what was so funny is that people thought I was still hurt after like making a joke out of all of this I would have never made a joke out of all of this if I was hurt severely because it's just like what the fuck that was the whole like troll of it all people thinking that i was severely hurt still how can this incident positively impact your future so it just gave me exposure so i feel like that's really been helping me with my future like out of this whole situation because you know the interviews and then pe people reaching out to me and people finding my business and just finding out me because it's not just some dumb girl that fell off of a bus stop like i model i have a youtube channel i have my own business i'm an electrician yeah i hope you guys enjoyed this little story time i'm so sorry that it's late but i really wanted to wait until we were going to win the super bowl but we didn't win the super bowl i was gonna do like a whole vlog after that and you know making my reappearance but we did not win and you know shit happens but we will come back next year harder and y'all will definitely see me standing on some shit next year if you have any additional questions comment them down below i would not have a problem answering any questions that i did not answer that people might still have and um yeah give this video a thumbs up you know hit that subscribe button why not subscribe to me put post notifications on etc follow me on instagram and twitter at mommy kilos and young st louis on tiktok as well as my businesses at young St customs on instagram and ys customs on twitter as well as shopping young St customs if you want a sweet tea or the iconic picture on a tee a sweatshirt or a hoodie we're philly gang at though thanks guys for watching and i hope you enjoyed see you guys in the next video e a g l e s eagles ciao i really want to talk about how i bought dunkin donuts for this freaking video and i never ate it <laughs>